Good morning, everybody. It's Connie Miller from New Heart Living again. I just want to thank everybody for your awesome encouragement and responses to the video that I made earlier this week. You all are a great encouragement to me because I used to make videos quite a bit and it, God used you to uh, remind me that I need to start doing this a little more often. So I woke up today and I thought I need to do another video. So I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to share today? So this is what I feel like he really wants me to share with you all today. Um, you know, I'm very open about the years that I spent in torment about um, with my security and my salvation. You know, I was confused. I thought I could lose my salvation. I had mixed messages from the church and everywhere else, the world, myself, the enemy. And so, you know, it took a lot of years for God to bring me out of that. And I feel like I'm supposed to read um, something that from my book, first book, Two Hearts Collide. And it's, it's the writing that I read uh, everywhere I go that I go for the first time, especially when I go into the prisons. And this was a writing, I, I remember it was a time when I was in my dark place again. I would go on my spiral of just doubting. And it was just a cycle, a vicious cycle. And it was two in the morning, literally I woke up at two in the morning and I was just at my, I was just not in a good place. I was at my wit's end. And I went to my office and I sat down to write. And at this time, God was really opening my eyes to the spiritual world around me, um, to the evil around me, and how it try, was trying to influence me. And so I remember he gave me this writing and it just poured out of me. And it, I think it's the most powerful writing the Lord's ever given me. And it, and it was just so clear how God was laying it out, the plan. The plan that evil had for my life and that God had for my life. So I want to read this to you today, and then I want to talk a little bit briefly about this. So this is what he gave me at 2 a.m. The plan. My dear child, the roots of rejection are deep within you. My child, in your mother's womb, you felt it because the great deceiver of your soul was there. He had a plan, but my great love for you canceled out all his plans. He thought he would surely destroy you by using your adoption to produce feelings of being cast out and abandoned. Oh, but my dear precious child, abandoned you were not, for I knew exactly where you were. He thought he was ordering your destruction, but I was setting you up for your greatness. On he goes, sending his imps to do his destructive deeds in your life. Your enemy says, I will send more rejection and abandonment from the ones who are supposed to love her. Then she will be open to receive the spirit of fear that I will send her. This way she will always have doubt and be untrusting of everyone you send, especially Jesus. I, the Lord God declares, she is mine. I call it out so it will be. So the deceiver goes on with his plan. Your enemy says, I will send a spirit of bondage to her so she will never be free. She will come, become so enslaved to worldly pleasures. She will never see how much Jesus loves her. This spirit will bring her so much confusion about what love is, she would do almost anything with anyone. After all, my imps of perversity have a right to be there from the sins of her ancestors. Her ancestors did not know their spiritual authority through Jesus, and she never will either. I will pass them to her children for further destruction. Oh, my plan is great. I, the Lord God, declares the curse has been broken through my son, Jesus shed blood. She will know this and take her authority one day. You are already under her feet. My, my, my mighty Holy Spirit will lead her into all truth. For all the people that you sent to crush her, I will send double that to build her back up. I will use them to show her that I am real and who I really am. I will build her up in my love. Your enemy says, I just can't have that. I will send the spirit of heaviness to invade her. She will be in such darkness and depression with a broken heart that she will never find her way out. She may have received your son, Jesus, but I will constantly be there to feed the doubt. She will be in despair. There will be no way out. I, the Lord God declares, I am the light in the darkness. I will pull her out myself with my transforming power. She is mine. While you thought you were destroying her, I was purifying her. When you thought she was at her breaking point, I was producing a steadfast warrior. She will be a warrior that will no one recognize when you are active in others' lives. She will be my hands and feet of love to them. She will proclaim the truth to a world that is in darkness. 
My child, do you see the plan of your enemy? Do you see my plan? It is coming forth. Now, go and proclaim freedom to the captives as you walk into your total freedom. The deceiver's plans have been canceled. They are null and void. Go forth, my anointed one, your daddy, God. Isaiah 61.1 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the, to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to the prisoners. Wow. <laughs> I, I read that and I still get overwhelmed sometimes with just how powerful that writing is. Because it really truly is the plan that he had for my life. And God was just shaking, nope, this isn't what it's going to be. You know, and all of us who believe have the anointed one living in, a, in us, which is Jesus Christ. So the same, the same um, spirit that he spoke of in Isaiah is the same spirit that we have. So today I want to encourage you that, you know, we sit here and worry about sometimes, you know, am I witnessing enough? Am I being an influence enough? And, you know, I, I'm to the point where I don't even worry about that anymore because I'm not a street evangelist. Everybody has different giftings. And, I, you know, I never was the one that would be going knocking on doors and telling them about Jesus. Doesn't mean that I can't do that, evangelize two people when given the opportunity. But I know that that's not my main gift. So, you know, I know how God's made me and the giftings he's given me now. So I can walk confidently in that. So I know that I don't have to worry about going out and witnessing to people. Because I have found that God is going to draw every single person to me that needs the experiences that I've gone through. The people that will receive what I have to give them through my experiences with the Lord are the people he's going to draw. He's going to create the circumstances that are people are going to be in that circumstance where they're going to be there ready to hear it and receive it. Whatever it is that God would have me to share. I don't have to worry about it. So let me ask you, what if we know that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, right? And vengeance was poured out on the enemy at the cross. We know this. But, you know, we still have to uh, battle in this world, uh, in this temporal world, um, through his lies, right? But what if God wants you to get vengeance on the enemy in this life right now? Now, you might be asking, well, wait a minute. I thought that vengeance is the Lord. How would I do that? Well, okay, the Lord lives in you, right? Okay, and you're the vessel, right? And we are in union and we work as one. So everything that you went through and the torment that he put on you and the lies that he had you believe and all the things that you were under and in a bondage to, when you get set free of that, now you have the authority in that area to go and set others free. And that is the area where you can proclaim vengeance on the Lord. So every person that you encounter that you help set free, that's vengeance on the enemy for everything he did to you. If, if, if you were addicted, right, and God's called you to people who are addicts, and you see those addicts set free, that's vengeance. For everything he did to you, that's vengeance, because now you're going, and the God, God is using you as the vessel to set others free. That's vengeance on the enemy. You're punching him in the nose, because he has no power over you. Or anyone else for that matter, they just don't know it, right? So God has called you to a certain people group that you will influence. And that may be a different people group than the people group he puts me in front of. I think it's very, <laughs> it's so cool how of all the people that God could put me before, and he's put me for, before a lot of people, but you know, I used to, I knew that what God was gonna call me to was gonna be big and it was gonna be great. Cause he said it to me, he promised it to me and, my, and when he would journal to me. And I'd be like, when God, when, and what, what's that mean? And I thought I, he was gonna have me speaking in churches and everything else. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready to go. Yes, the church needs this message, you know, no he needs what I have. But little did I know, he was gonna put me in front of men, prisoners, Men with a that is a huge audience, and I'm sorry for my grandfather clock. It's 11. I knew it was going to chime, so you just have to listen to my grandfather clock. I apologize for that, but 
I think it's very cool how all those years that I spent doubting my salvation and my security in Him, because that was the biggest area for me. I wasn't secure because there were so many roots of abandonment and rejection as, as the Lord laid out in the plan. That those, those um, roots were deep. You know, and now the Lord had come and he was uprooting all that wrong belief system that I had, right? And so he's put me before people, these men who I know. Well, how do I know this? Because he's put me before them. I, have, I share what I, what I went through and I share what he's done and, and how he brought me through and now I'm so secure. There's nothing that's going to shake that now because I spent years that would get shaken, but it was a process. And so now I can go before these men and deal with the same root that is in them. That root of insecurity, the how can daddy really love me that much? After all I've done, and look what I just did, how can his love still be permanent? How come he's not left me yet? Um, does he really, is he really there permanently? Is he really not mad at me anymore? All the things that used to torment me, the questions that I used to ask myself over and over, and the lies the enemy would feed me, all those things, now I can go in front of these men and declare with boldness because I've lived it and I've experienced it and I've been through it. Now he's using it and that's vengeance. I'm declaring vengeance on the enemy for all those years he tormented me. Vengeance is being put on the enemy because now I'm going in authority in that area and setting the captives free. That's what it's all about. I think it, it just gets so excited, so excited. Because you see, he's called us to raise up ruins. Raise up ruins. So we are, we are going to help repair desolate, desolate people. We're going to raise up their ruins. We're going to build them up in his love. We're raising up ruins with the power that works within us. Jesus Christ. We're, we're a team. We're a team. So today I just wanted to um, give you some encouragement that, that the enemy's had a plan for your life. And that plan may look a little different, but it, it's, it's kind of all the same. You know, he sends these, like just with some of these, um, you know, he started out with roots of abandonment and rejection when I was adopted out at two years old. So it started there, right? So then he just builds on it. And he brings other people to kind of just unknowingly uses other people to, um, you know, set that, it, set that a little deeper in us. So like when he said that he'll send more rejection and abandonment, he sent more people that will reject me. I was teased in school, rejection. So that would just confirm that belief system that was being built in me, that wrong belief system. Now, then he would send fear, which that's something, it's not like it was, but that spirit of fear still tries to come on me. You know, and I know better ways to battle it now. I have the Lord living in me and he's given me ways to battle it now. But I, you know, fear, a spirit of fear, literally a spirit, spirit of bondage. That's me. We're addicted to things. We're made to be addicted to God, but we were in bondage to all these other things. So he had done a lot of damage. Oh, but God, but God. God had a plan and his plan's always bigger than his plan. He's going to trump the enemy's plan. And it's the same for your life. It may look a little different, but it's the same for your life. So I hope this encourages you today. If you want to read more of my journey, uh, it's Two Hearts Collide. You can get them on Amazon. I have downloads from the Heart of Daddy God. You know, it's... And I read, I read back on this now, and you know, I didn't fully understand everything. I see, you know, and, and and you write as you best hear from God. So you know, it was the process I had to go through. I mean, I understand things better even now than when I wrote my first two books, and how I heard Him. But everything is being used. Everything I went through is being used as vengeance upon the enemy.
as I go and, and the vessel that he uses to help set captives free. And that's the same for you today. You can go in boldness knowing that he's going to put the right people in front of you that need what you've been through and what you've learned and what you know about the living God who lives in you. And how you would who how you would voice it to them in your unique way, that's what those people need. And the ones that don't receive it, that's okay. Somebody else he will put in before them. So maybe they can hear it and receive it. So today, remember, God's plan is always, always bigger than the enemy's plan. Go forth, anointed ones, and set the captives free. This is Connie Miller of New Heart Leaving. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.